exit the time machine onto the familiar rooftop. As before, it's empty. I can see the top of the train station a short distance away. This is the third time I've been here now. I run through the plan in my head one last time. Time is short, but I have no choice. I have to do it. No, I will do it. Failure isn't an option. I wait for Zasuya to break the lock, then run inside just like last time. Narrowly avoiding the first me again, I descend to the seventh floor. Last time I went all the way down to the fourth floor, but not this time. But doesn't Carizo have to meet you? On the fourth floor? I direct my attention to the capsule toy machine near the landing. It's time for step one. Reina Kakaru character doll series. This is it. On July 28th, the first me won a super rare metal lupa from this very machine. No time to waste. I insert the 100 yen coin I prepared beforehand and turn the lever hard. A capsule falls into the slot. Just as I grab it... Look! Reynat! My heart leaps into my throat. That was Mayuri's voice! She's already here? I quickly turn and leave the area before Mayuri can see my face. Luckily, she's so entranced by the capsule toy machine that she doesn't realize who I am. Once I get down to the fourth floor, I check the contents of the capsule. The Metalupa is inside. This is the prize that was meant for me. Which means the first me will get? The answer is obvious. Phase one is complete. Time for phase two. I turn around abruptly. Ah! Carice was standing behind me, her mouth open in surprise. My timing was perfect. Hey, you just came down from the... I... Huh? I'm going to save you. Leave everything to me. What? I say no more. If I tell her everything, she'll have no reason to talk to the first me. On July 28th, she came to me during Nakabashi's presentation. She claimed that I'd tried to tell her something, then proceeded to drag me out into the hallway for further questioning. That is part of my experience. This should be enough to ensure that it happens exactly as I remember. I pat Carice on the shoulder, then race back up the stairs. Wait! I run to the 6th floor, then creep up towards the 7th floor landing until I can just make out the capsule toy machines. As expected, there's the first me about to turn the lever in Mayuri's stead. Ah, it's an Upa! Is it rare? It's not rare, but isn't it just so cute? Mayuri loves Upa! Bingo! There we go, the Nakabashi paper will now burn on the Russian airplane. I grinned to myself. It worked. The order changed. Mayuri now is a regular Upa, not the metal one I gave her the first time. Isn't it funny how these small decisions can change the fate of the world? The butterfly effect, man. And that means... Thank you all for coming to Dr. Nakabashi's Time Machine Press Conference! I also host Rain at Access Battlers, it seems! <laughs> Same boys! The presentation is about to begin. The first me heads up to the 8th floor. But Mayuri doesn't move. She takes out a pen and starts signing the Yupa. Just as planned. When Dr. Nakabashi defected to Russia on August 21st, he had Mayuri's metal Yupa with him. If he has a plastic one instead, it should change the fate of the Nakabashi paper. But one question remains. How exactly did Mayuri's Yupa fall into Dr. Nakabashi's hands? Hmm. She probably dropped it somewhere and he found it. Then again, will he pick up something that's not a metal lupa? Does he know the, val the value of it? I watch as Mayuri finishes signing her name. She nods in satisfaction and runs after the first me. Just before she gets to the stairs, she puts the upa into her coat pocket. But it doesn't go in all the way. As she runs up the stairs, I see it fall out and roll away. Mayuri is completely oblivious. A moment later, she disappears from sight. I look at the upa lying on the floor. Does Nakabashi pick it up? How? He's in the middle of his presentation upstairs. He doesn't have any opportunity. That's when Kurisu comes up from downstairs. I quickly hide in the stairwell across the landing. She finds it. Does she think it's cute? Kurisu reaches the seventh floor without noticing me. She finds the fallen upa and picks it up. So it was Kurisu who found the upa. The butterfly effect. 
In three weeks, this completely innocuous event changes the outcome of an accidental fire on what must be thousands of planes flying that day. By extension, it changes the fate of the entire human race. Carissa looks curiously at the Upa and looks around as if searching for the owner. Of course, Carissa doesn't know who Mayuri is. At this point in time, those two aren't even acquainted yet. After realizing there's no one around, Carissa puts the Upa into her envelope and goes up to the 8th floor. Now that I've seen what I need to see, I go upstairs too and head to the employee hallway. Alright, step 1 complete. Time for step 2. Here's where it gets serious. I grip the Sialum saber and shake it silently, thus activating the red fluorescent reaction inside. It lasts about 10 minutes. It should get dim before Carissa makes her appearance. I know what I need to do. The problem is that my window of opportunity is so slim. Will I be able to handle the enraged Dr. Nakabashi? One mistake, and Kurisu will die. What are you afraid of, Hoyo and Kiyuma? Everything's going according to plan. Operation Skull is flawless. You spent 15 years perfecting it, remember? Believe in yourself. Believe in Hoyo and Kiyuma. Hoyo and Kiyuma will save Kurisu. I close my eyes and wait for the time to come, hidden behind the same pile of cardboard boxes as last time. I hear the sound of sparse applause from the event hall, which means I should be hearing footsteps soon. Here she comes. There they are. Carisio has come, right on time. She leans against the wall and looks inside her envelope, smiling softly as she does. And now... I know the reason behind that smile. It's the Yupa inside. She's probably smiling at how adorable it is, meaning that on the other world line she was smiling at the metal Yupa. That smile really doesn't suit you, Karisu. <laughs> I stifle a chuckle. Stifle? Stifle? I'm surprised I'm calm enough to feel that way, despite the current situation. Once Nakabashi appears, that's my single signal to spring into action. I'll bring out Asylum Saber as soon as that bastard tries to take out his knife. Then I'll scare him away and stun Kurisu. The stun gun I brought should handle both tasks flawlessly. That's the plan, at least. Yeah, come on with the lightsaber. He'll be scared. Here he comes. Here's the father of the year! The next set of footsteps echoes down the hallway. Kurisu looks up. I can't see Nakabashi, but I know it's him. I wanted to talk, so we, I guess we have to let them have their talk. Dots. Are you listening, Papa? Even the words she speaks are the same. What is that? I heard you were giving a presentation on time travel. So I thought about it too. Could it be possible to make a time machine? The atmosphere is far from pleasant. Nakabashi doesn't even try to hide his displeasure. And the first me is probably at fault for that. At least partially. Looks like it's about time for Nakabashi to go ballistic. I grip the Asylum's saber and make one final check. It's already dimmed down, and all I have to do is remove the cap at the tip and the fake blood will- Huh? My breath catches in my throat. In the darkness of my hiding spot, I bring the Asylum's saber close to my eyes and peer inside. The fake blood has begun to coagulate. Coagulate. Co the, the, the words! No, this shouldn't happen. I was certain the liquid would remain fluid for around 30 minutes after losing luminescence. Was it effective? Come to think of it, we never tested the Asylum Saber. It can only be used once before the tube needs to be replaced. Given the lab's financial, financial, financial situation, we thought it would be a waste to use it, so we never did. How could I have failed to consider this possibility? If I had ha half a brain, I would have brought a spare. This is bad. The plan is falling apart. I wasn't shunned, you goddamn kid! Nakabashi's shrill shriek startles me. Those incompetent bastards were just jealous of my superiority. I was the one who gave up on them! Please don't yell. Time won't stop for me. How do I recover from this setback? I can't leave. Nakabashi is about to attack his daughter. If I make my appearance after that, 
It'll be the same as last time. I'll end up killing Kurisu again. No matter what, I can't let that happen. What do I do? Do I go back to the time machine and try again? No, remember what Sasua said? There's not enough fuel for another trip. This is my last chance. Uh, we haven't seen each other in a while. There's a lot I want to talk about. You're living in Aomori now, right? Quiet. Leave. Eh? Go back to America. Never show your face to me again. But... You want my opinion? We'll submit it jointly. You don't mean any of that. I know how you think. My heart is pounding. I'm sweating like crazy. Feels like I've just run a marathon. By the way, if you're confused about the fact that he has a voice, I can't disable it for some reason. It's probably a bug. It's one of the voices you just can't disable. I cover my mouth to suppress the sound of my breathing. Is this pity? How dare you? You're supposed to be my daughter! I... I don't understand. Please calm... I am calm! Don't tell me what to do! Nakabashi's about to snap. Events are proceeding just like last time, barreling inexorably towards disaster. Please, I find myself begging. Make time stop. But another voice from within answers. Are you praying? Hoyin? <gasps> Kiyoma? Have you forgotten? I'll tell you why I called you here today. I wanted to show you my research. Research beyond even what you can imagine. I wanted to prove once and for all that you are nothing compared to me. Change the future. Deceive the world. But that brat in the lab coat ruined everything. I know you were laughing at me too, don't you deny it. How dare you treat your own father this way. I wasn't... You want my opinion? Fine. I'll give it to you. I'm going to publish it myself. End of discussion. I won't curb the mercy of a heartless god. I will save Kurisu myself. She won't die again. Not at my hands. Not at anyone's. You're... stealing it? What did you say? You're stealing my work? I didn't think even you would do something like... Uh. Nakabashi strikes Kurisu on the cheek. Who do you think you're talking to? It's starting. Mm, there we go. Doing the good old Homer Simpson. Nakabashi puts his hands around Kurisu's neck. Her cries of agony fill my ears. There's still a way to prevent Kurisu's death. That puddle of blood I saw beneath Kurisu's body. There's one more way to reproduce it. Are you talking about the wounds that she gets from the screwdriver? Or are you talking about... Something else. One more way. One last chance. It's a gamble to be sure. Even if it succeeds, I don't know what effect it might have on the Steinsgate world line. What are you planning? Where are you going to get the blood? You can't possibly understand how I feel. Why did you have to be so talented? I detest you. I hate your very existence. Nobody is allowed to be better than me. Understand? Nobody. Especially not my own daughter. That's why I abandoned you. I couldn't bear the shame of being your father. It's all your fault. It's all your fault. It matters not. I am Hoyoyen Kiyuma, the mad scientist who defies God. My true desire is chaos. I have no need for a predetermined future. Stop! Are you planning to kill? I mean, you can't kill Nakabashi. Doesn't Convergence mess that up? You plan to cut Kurisu somewhere so blood spills out? What are you planning? Calmly, I step out from my hiding spots. Nakabashi looks at me in disbelief. His eyes are wide and bloodshot. You! You're the brat who ruined my presentation! Nakabashi lets go of Kurisu. How dare you show your face before me? Why does everyone get in my way? I know. You and Kurisu planned this, didn't you? Didn't you? You brats won't get away with this. Nakabashi pulls the knife from his pocket. Its blade reflects cold light. Once I see that glint, I laugh disdainfully. Try it. If you dare. You. Who are you? My name. 
Is Hoyo Yin Kiyuma? What? Ho, oh, for Phoenix, then in, then finally, the terrible truth that must never be revealed. Hoyo Yin Kiyuma. I am the bringer of chaos, the destroyer of order, and I am the one who will end your ambition. Kurisa staggers to her feet with her hands to her neck. Run away! Never! Last time that role was reversed, wasn't it? I dismiss Kurisu's plea and instead turn to Nakabashi with my arms spread wide. What's wrong, Dr. Nakabashi? Aren't you going to kill me? Or have you lost your nerve? Of course, a mere mortal can never slay a god such as I- <laughs> Is the blood going to be ours? Because we can't die. You little- Nakabashi goes into a frenzy. He charges me with his knife, point first. No, Papa! Stop! Nakabashi has completely lost his mind. I can see it in his eyes. He won't stop. And if he won't stop, then I'll stop him. With my own body. You can't kill me. You're nothing! Die! The knife approaches. Its point glitters menacingly in the dim lights. Inches away. I don't move a muscle. It is my last chance. I'll do whatever it takes. <laughs> Intense pain ribs through my abdomen. I feel the cold steel sink into my body. Ah! Getting stabbed by a knife is so fucking creepy to think about. He did it. He stabbed me. With the knife. That killed Kurisu. The pain flares. It feels like my insides are being torn out. Ah, 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 ah. Nakabashi yanks out the knife. Blood gushes from the open wound. Ah, ah, ah. The iron taste of blood spreads through my mouth. Pain threatens to steal away my consciousness. My body's on fire. My vision blurs. I struggle desperately to stay on my feet. <laughs> now who's laughing? <laughs> That's what you get for mocking me! I whip out the stun gun and switch it on. The electric arc crackles to life, inches away from Nakabashi's face. He instantly turns pale. Now you've done it! I spare him with my glare and take a step forward. A wave of nausea surges over me. Gah! We're trying to scare him off, right? Because we couldn't see him here on the other world line. Blood spews from my throat. But I don't look away. I keep my eyes fixed on Nakabashi. You'll regret this, old man! I'm going to kill you! <gasps> you and the girl. I'll kill you both! Don't move! Carissa runs up to me. She holds me and supports my body. Lie down! I'll call an ambulance! What is she doing trying to help me? Didn't she hear me threaten to kill her? You're too soft-hearted for a Sundere. Back when I was trying to save Mayuri, you were always the one who saved me. So this time... I'm going to save you. What? Dash, 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 dash. Kurisu convulses. Strength leaves the legs she used to support me. She collapses. Well, had to be done. <laughs> I'm sorry. I send her my silent apology. I'll be sure to have my way with your daughter before I kill her. But first is you, Nakabashi. <laughs> Nakabashi tosses his knife away with a pitiful cry. He takes a step back, two steps back. No need for me to voice that, that was pretty much spot on. Firing the stun gun once more does the trick. 
Nakabashi turns and flees down the hallway towards the elevators. But first, he makes sure to pick up the envelope Karisu dropped. How shrewd of him. I touch my wounds. Ugh. Now do we have to like cover the floor in this stuff? In our own blood? The lightest touch sends pains cursing through my body. I fall to my knees. I feel faint. The bleeding won't stop. The blood is starting to pool on the floor. I press my hands into the blood. Still, not enough. I reach for my stomach, wet and glistening with blood. Oh no, no! I take a deep breath and drive my fingers into the wounds. Yeah! The pain is like nothing I've ever experienced. Unable to bear it, I throw back my head. I scream until my throat is raw. I can't stop now. Fighting against the urge to faint, I feed strength into my hands and pull the wound wider. My blood paints the floor crimson. Uncle Ogren! Susua runs up to me. That wound! What happened? What were you thinking? If you die, if we fail, we're not destined to die. <laughs> Uncle? You forget who you're dealing with, Susua. <laughs> Look at the floor. Notice anything? The floor? <laughs> that should be enough blood, don't you think? She looks down and beholds my masterpiece. A pool of blood! To deceive myself. To deceive the world. The stage is set! But uncle, you'll die! <laughs> There's no way I'm going to die. Who do you think I am? I am the insane mad scientist Hoyoyin Kiyuma. Uncle... If convergence holds, then it's already determined that I don't die. Not here. I die in 2025. That's a fixed event on the Beta world line. That was my bet. I intentionally provoked Nakabashi to rage. I took the knife meant for Karisu and survived. The wound gave me what I needed to carry out the plan. Though I have to admit, I didn't think it would hurt this much. There's no telling what will happen when we reach Stein's Gate. The future of that world line is still undecided. There's no reason it can't include my death. How ironic. I made a bet based on the guarantee that I wouldn't die, but winning that bet makes death a very real possibility. I twist my lips into a smile. Time to put the finishing touch on my masterpiece. Susua, get Kurisu. Ah, okay. Susua picks up the unconscious Kurisu. And she lays her face down on top of my blood puddle. Kurisu doesn't wake up. She's perfectly still. But she's definitely breathing. I stroke her hair gently. Did it hurt? I'm sorry, but I had to do it, to save you. Even though these three weeks will never come back, I want you to live. Even if we reach Stein's Gate, even if Karisu lives, even if I don't die, we'll never meet again. Karisu will never join the lab. We will never build a time leap machine together. But still, I'm glad I was able to save her. Goodbye. Please stay unconscious for a while. I need you to deceive the first me. While Susua goes to pick up the knife, I use the wall to climb to my feet. Mission complete. Return to base. Hmm. Now, let's hope that worked. I'm really curious how our wounds, like how it's gonna work out the fact that we stabbed ourselves technically it's crazy uncle you're insane insane nonsense this is all according to plan <laughs> don't talk i'll take you back to august 21st try to endure the g's okay oh, damn i should have brought a first aid kit i feel pressure crush my body my wound throbs 
I feel like groaning, but I bite my lip and bear it. Rainbow lights fill my vision. The time machine is activating. The sewer wraps my wound with a towel. Hey, uncle. I'm sure Stein's gate is waiting for us on the other side. A world where nothing is known, where anything is possible. A world where you live, where Makisa Kurisu lives, where Shina Mayuri lives. A world where I have no reason to travel to 2010. The future may still lead to World War III. It may lead to a dystopia ruled by CERN. Someone's warm hand grasps mine. Tightly. Tightly. But now? There is hope for the future again. I slowly close my eyes. It's hard to breathe, but my pain feels distant now. Once we arrive, I'll probably disappear. I won't be able to thank you for bringing me to Stein's Gate. So I'll say it now. The warmth of her hand slowly fades away. Thank you, Uncle. Don't die. Live. And in seven years, let's meet again, okay? <sighs> it's time to go home. Mayuri and Dara are waiting. And with them, a future that is yet to be written. You can't end it here! You can't end it when you make me so excited about what's going to happen! Oh, man. Okay. That was... so good. Oh, despite... I, I, I would still consider that sort of a cliffhanger, but I hear they're making another Steins Gate game. Oh, this is too good to be true. This game was so good. Like, it started off rather slowly. Like, I actually didn't enjoy recording this around that time. Like, this would always be the game that I recorded, uh, like, when I had to. Like, I didn't really want to at all. It's turned now. I don't want to play any other game. I don't want to play The Witcher 3. I don't want to play Isaac. I don't want to play anything. I just want to play Stein's Gates. It's become so much after the halfway point. Once everything is established, once you understand everything and everything starts falling, hitting the fan, just going all over the place and just being crazy. And you try to piece together the puzzle, and every time you think you've done it, there's always something that becomes apparent. And then in the final episodes, they pull ties back to the very, very beginning, and choices in the very beginning. And reaching Steins Gate and everything, and just... Ah, oh, it's so cool! So freaking amazing! I love this visual novel! It was a blast to play! It was seriously so, so enjoyable! Words can't describe it. I loved it. And it's so much fun playing visual novels like this that really get to you, affect you in a way that no big boob etchy visual novels can do. Oh, this was an adventure that was so worth going on. It took us over 60 parts and... Oh, it was so freaking good. There are other series in like the... Uh, it's not really Stein Steins Gate universe, but like the universe with all of this stuff in it. Uh, there's like the prequel, Chaos Head, and there's the next game, Robotics Nodes, I think. I don't know if that's translated or what, or if, even if they're that good. But we will at least be playing the sequel to Steins Gate, if what I heard was true. That would be amazing. So through it all, like... Oh, ever since our adventures on the Alpha World line were... Everything was about saving Mayuri, to realizing we can't save her, to go into another world line where Kurisu dies, and then realizing that there is hope after all. We need to prevent World War III by saving the girl we love. By stealing an Upa. And faking it. Oh, it's just so... It's so cool. Like the butterfly effect kicking in. The consequences that it had on the world. Like, it was really interesting. And it was a really good... Use of time travel. I know what I'm gonna do straight after this once I'm done uh, editing this. I'm gonna go and I'm gonna sit through the anime. Now, I think there's some extra Steins Gates visual novel stories, but I don't think they're translated from what I heard. 
I know that there's some uh, extra anime ad like episodes and stuff. I don't know what that's all about, but I'll be sure to check it out and enjoy it. But holy macaroni, the twists and turns in this story it was just amazing. I feel like playing the guitar. <laughs> Well, guys and girls, I want to thank you so much for coming with me on this journey that we've had together. Oh, it's been amazing. Like, it was uh, just the genuine joy I felt during these last few parts where I realized that there was actually hope. Like, I was kind of depressed during the credit scene, but then they start like backtracking the credits and you're like, wait, 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 what's going on? And then there's like a whole chapter 11, open the Stein's gate. Oh, it's so crazy. It is so crazy. I, lo I love this. I love this so freaking much. Oh? Oh? The divergence is changing. Open the Steins gates. Wait, 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 what? It's been a month since then. My wound was deep enough to require surgery. If I'd been just one hour late getting into the hospital, I would have died from blood loss. The doctor laughed as he told me this. Hilarious. After being cooped up in the hospital for so long, it's exciting to be walking around Akiba again. I looked around to see if Akiba's any different from what I remember, but nothing catches my eye. I just get the feeling that there are mo more Moe shops than before. The mysteries of divergence. I chuckle to myself, then dig into my pocket. Something jingles. There are metal pins inside. Eight of them. The Future Gadget Laboratory's member badges. They're designed based on the pins Asua brought from the future. Which world line Sasua was that again? Anyway. Back then, we searched all over Akiba for that pin. And while I was hospitalized, I thought it was the perfect opportunity to ask Daru to have them made. And of course, the one we commissioned to make them was that sha- the one, Yeah, the one we commissioned to make them was that shady foreign street vendor. <laughs> the final product is slightly different from Susua's, but it's pretty well done. I pass through the archway of Yanabayashi Shrine and head to the courtyard. There, brandishing a sword with sublime dignity, Stands a Miko. The Miko is so lovely that anyone would doubtless stop to stare. But that's not a Miko, and that's not a real sword. That sword is a 980 yen imitation, and that beautiful Miko... It's a guy! The Kako lifts his head at the sound of my footsteps. Okibe-san! Soon as her eyes meet, he runs up to me in a fluster. His eyes are already wet with tears. You were discharged today? Yeah. But, I'm sorry, I didn't know anything about it. Of course you didn't. I didn't tell you. But I'm glad you're okay. I'm... I'm so happy. And then he starts crying in earnest. Seeing his tears, I feel an urge to pat his head and tell him everything will be alright, but I resist and sigh instead. I hear you were a natural at your cosplay debut. I hear you even have a fan club. Oh... Mary filled me in on the situation. What has happened? After years of persistent nagging, she finally convinced Lukaku to cosplay near the end of summer break. It wasn't a time for Kamima, but he wore one of Mayuri's costumes to a cosplay event in early September. His cosplay debut was effective. Dozens of photogra photographers took his picture, and the images soon went viral on the net. Try to look up pictures of Lukaku now, and you'll get a ton of hits. He's being swamped by fans. And since he's what they call a trap, he's popular with girls too. There are some things in this world I just don't understand. To be honest, it's so confusing. You know, I still haven't had the pleasure to see you cosplay in the flesh. I... I just can't. If Okibe-san were to see me, I'd get so embarrassed, I'd die. But you had fun, didn't you? That's what Mayuri said. Yes. You've grown up, Lukaku. He's overcome his feelings of inad inadequacy, and accepted himself for who he is. And he even had fun doing it! Okay, but... Uh, I mean, Kuma-san, 
It's all thanks to the Seishin Sanma style you taught me. I've cleared my mind of all the mundane thoughts. He truly is a worthy disciple. But you must not... But you must not grow complacent. Your next objective is to ascend the true form of the Seishin Sanma. Once you mastered it, the flames of evil sealed within you will have nothing left to burn. That moment will mark the beginning of the legend of Urushibara Luka, guardian Miko of the Personapolis of Akihabara. Um, what exactly will this legend be about? I shall tell you at the proper time. I reach into my pocket and take out a pen. Lab Mem number 006, Urushibara Luka. I grant this unto you. Luak Lukaku nervously accepts the pin with a confused expression. Um, when did I become a lab man? It's a memory from beyond the veil of time. Your past life, I suppose you could say. M my past life? You've been a lab man from the moment you were born. Be proud. It's not an exaggeration. It's the truth. Lukaku most likely doesn't remember. But it's okay, even if I'm the only one who does. That's... You don't like it? No, it's just... I'm really happy. He starts crying again. I always wanted to, to be part of your lab. I wanted to be one of you. But I never had the courage to ask. Thank you so much. He bows his head. What I'm interested in... Uh, what I'm interested in is seeing Mueka. What, what's Mueka up to? This is a precious artifact. Only eight of them exist in the entire world. It's a magic item that protects you from all calamity. Really? No. So don't lose it. I won't. Lukaku nods with a joyful smile on his face. Too cute. <laughs> Welcome back, Miaster. I pass through May Queen's doors for the first time in forever. Ferris runs over to greet me. Kiyuma! She suddenly links arms with me. At first, I get a little flustered when something soft touches my elbow, but then I break into cold sweat once I feel the murderous glares of the surrounding Ferris fans. <laughs> they let you out of the hospital, yeah? Yeah, I managed to claw my way out of hell. I tear Ferris off of me and take a deep breath. Precisely what I expected from the Hoyoyin bloodline. The name of the Undying Phoenix isn't just for show, yeah? I see that she's still making up her own backstories for people. It boggles the mind that this crazy cat girl is behind the red redevelopment of Akihabara. Maybe the world's just messed up. Mayushi has the day off, nya? I know. She shows me to my table where I order iced coffee. Oh, right. We decided to open a second May Queen location, nya? And it's right on Shuadori, nya? Isn't that awesome, nya? Don't you think you're abusing your authority as a redevelopment committee chair? Just a little? No doubt the recent explosion of Moe shops is her doing. I think she's getting just a little carried away. This is my sacred duty, nya? Now it's time to summon all the powers of Moe to this holy land in preparation for their offensive, nya? What, you're going to attack? Did the awakening occur while I was in the hospital? That's right, nya. They took our absence as their opportunity, nya. Will we be able to complete the modification of Akiba before they hatch? That's the only way to defeat them. It's a race against time, nya? Ferris also fought in the Reignet AB tournament to gather karma, but... It was really tough by myself, nya? What the hell does she mean by karma? Over the past month, Ferris has started participating in Reignet Access Battlers tournaments. Ferris is the chairman of the Akihabara Redevelopment Project, a high school student, a popular waitress at the Maid Cafe, the president of the company founded by her father, and the head of the Akia family. On this world line, though, just what is different? Is there a chance that her father is alive, for example? Or is that too much? She should be incredibly busy, but I guess she couldn't stay away from Reignet forever. Anyway, she wanted to have her very first official tournament and snatched a dramatic victory. Ferris is even more cheerful than usual now. I guess all it takes to get it fulfilled is to do the things you like to do. I need your mad scientist powers to stop them, yeah? If they make it into town, they'll make the place their litter box. I guess I have no choice. If it's come to this, then I too must fulfill the covenant. Oh yeah, and take this with you. Yeah? I take a pin out of my pocket and present it to Ferris. This is... Where did you get this, Kuma? During my stray at the hospital. So you've overcome the test of the heart, yeah? You truly are a great man, yeah? I don't really get what's going on, so let's just nod for now. This belongs to you, 
Lab Member 007. Whenever you need my help, just hold that pin and speak the incantation, La Yoda Stasella. Ferris and I smile at each other. And then we high-five. Thanks, Nya. The future guided laboratory is the hope of a key, Banya. Can I come over for a visit, Nya? Of course you can. Thor will be glad to see you. When I get back to the lab, I'm startled to find an unexpected visitor. Mueka has nobody close to her. Tanushi Yugo has lost his wife, and he has comforted Mueka in the past. Does this mean what I think it means? Oh my god, if this means what I think it means. That's... That's... I'm a killer, by the way. That's... I know she's not a killer on this one line. Yo, Okabe! Out of the hospital already? Uh, yeah. Tanushi Yugo and Nei are standing out front. Kiryu Mueka is with them. The rounders who killed Mayuri on another world line. Right there is three murderers. <laughs> that's kind of great. Then again, the only person Tanuji killed was himself. But, you know, that's still technically murder, isn't it? Nay hides behind her father when she sees me, like usual. Oh yeah, let me introduce ya. Tanuji indicates Mueka with his chin. Starting today, this girl's gonna work part-time at my place. Okay, so they hadn't gone as far as I was thinking, but still. That's good for Mueka! That's really good for Mueka! Having like a having a job, having a purpose, having a routine. And I'm sure that Tanushi is going to be able to comfort her and make her more, you know, confident in herself. Mueka bows her head. She's silent as always, but at least she's not holding her phone. I guess that's some improvements. Doesn't talk much, but don't let it bother you. Don't worry. Shining Finger and I know each other already. Shining Finger? Who's that? I point to Mueka. Shining Finger! That's the name of her Esper power. Tanuji and Mueka ignore me completely. He helped me look for an IBN 5100. I gotta thank you, Emil, from her during my stay in the hospital. That email helped me figure out our relationship on this world line. Oh, that retro PC you were talking about? Did you find one? Mueka shakes her head. Well, it is... Well, it is just an urban legend. Why did you decide to work here? Did Tanushi tell her who she is? I thought Mueka wasn't supposed to know of Beast's true identity. I brought her. Nay speaks up in a tiny voice. I introduced her to Daddy. I see. So you're a matchmaker, huh? Hey, numbskull! There's only two things I love in this world. Brawn tubes and my little girl. D daddy Besides, it was more like the other way around. After Nay fell and got hurt, this girl gave her first aid and brought her all the way back here. I didn't know Mueka had such a gentle side. Since she was unemployed, I decided to give her a job as thanks for helping my girl. Never thought our store would hire a part-timer. <laughs> didn't you hire one just last month? Huh? You high on your painkills, kid. I never had help before. Ah, of course. The Sasua who worked here was the Sasua of the Alpha World Line. The Sasua came from a future ruled by CERN. The current World Line has a different future, so she didn't come. The time she spent here never happens. Well, in that case, good luck to you, Moeka. This is the perfect opportunity. I take a pin out of my pocket and hand it to Moeka. Um. Oh, now you're flirting? Don't mess around with my part timer! This pin is proof that you're a lab mem number 005. Our lab is on the second floor. Come by, come on by whenever you feel like it. That's... Mueka stares at the pin in her hands. But I can't help you look for the IBN 5100 anymore, okay? Don't be like that. Help her out, will you? I can't. I'm a busy man. Catch the attention of the rounders again? <laughs> no thanks. Besides, the three of them are better off if we never find an IBN 5100. I end the conversation with a shrug and head to the stairs. So I guess they're rounders on this world line, still working for CERN, but without our time travel technology that CERN steals, they're never able to fully complete it. Meaning they have no reason to either kill themselves or anybody else. They're probably just going to fail and never find an IBN. Okibekun. Mueka calls my name. I turn back to see Mueka smiling, ever so faintly. 
Thank you. For this. Yeah. The hatred I once felt towards them is gone. I forgave Moeka and Tanuji both. Now that I destroyed our time machine, we can go back to being good neighbors. I won't pry into their secret lives and I won't attempt to fight them either. It's all up to them. However, the affection that Nei showed towards Moeka brings an undeniable warmth to my heart. She better after she stabbed her! Right as I walk into the lab, I'm greeted by the chiming of a microwave oven. Ocarin! Myri smiles brightly as she takes her juicy chicken number one out of the microwave. Doo doo doo! Welcome back, Ren! Did you just combine welcome back and Ocarin? Yep, I said it before, remember? And Myri holds out the steaming chicken. Want some too? I'll give you one to celebrate your homecoming. I accept the gift of chicken and pop it into my mouth. I guess it's because I've had nothing but crappy hospital food for a month, but it's so delicious I want to cry. Where did you get that microwave? We just assembled a phone wave, name subject to change, weeks ago. Oh. Oh, that was me. Dario pops out of the development room in all his Bratoon glory. I wonder if he's making a new future gadget. You bought it? I found it, duh. It was a pain to repair. It's kind of old, but it still works fine. That's our super hacker. Now let's keep up that pace and make the next future gadget. That reminds me, Okarin. I am mad at you. Myra suddenly puts on a pout. Why did you leave the hospital without telling Mayushi? We went all the way to the hospital to pick you up, but the nurse said you'd already left. That was one hot nurse. I wish I was hospitalized instead of Okarin. You think you're my guardian now, Mayuri? Hmm, damn, yeah, you've certainly come up in the world. Have you forgotten? I'm the one who protects you. I even helped you with your diaper. Gah. I couldn't move at all after the operation. So my mother and Mayuri made the great effort to come in to care for me. Especially Mayuri. Even though it was her summer break, she visited me every day. I'm grateful for this childhood friend of mine. From the bottom of my heart. She's a ditz, to be sure. And seems like she always needs someone to look out for her. But she's actually quite tough for her age. You got your childhood friend to change your diaper? I'm jealous, man. What a rogue is that from? I think Dara needs to die for a bit. I bop Mayuri on the head. I'll buy you some juicy chicken number one later. Really? <laughs> Thanks, Okarin. It was worth the help you after all. Hehehe. <laughs> I breathe another sigh of relief when I see Mayuri's innocent smile. Mayuri is still alive. I've seen her die countless times. Though the events of those world lines have been undone, my struggle to escape them was not in vain. If the same thing were to happen again, what would I do? Would I accept your death this time? Or would I try again to save her, even if it meant building another time machine? There's no way to know. The future is undecided. But for now, Mayuri is here. And that means everything to me. Here, take these. I give Mayuri and Daru their pins. Lukako, Ferris, Mueka, Mayuri, Daru, Okabe. That makes six. Meaning, the two left are the ones for Susua and Makisa Kurisu, who sadly aren't around to obtain the pins. It's so cute! So cute! Nice, you're finally done! Myra pins the badge to her chest and shows it off with a pirouette. Gotta be sure to put this on every day, or else I won't be let into the lab. Nobody really made that rule, but whatever. But you know, there's something I've been meaning to ask you about the pin. What's that? There's an inscription, right? It says OSHMKUFA 2010. Okibe, Shina, Hashida, and then Urishibara and Faris. I got those. But what about M, K, and A? Who are they? Well, isn't it obvious? Isn't it obvious? That's... M for Makisa, K for Kiryu, A for Amana. But the current Mayuri wouldn't understand. Those three were lab mems on the world line undone and forgotten. I haven't told Mayuri or Daru about them. 
They wouldn't believe me even if I told them. Especially about the last initial... A. I mean, how do I tell Daru that he's going to have a daughter? I can't just imagine his reaction. Who's my lucky bride to be? Oh, she's got a cute cat face and delicious flat chest and blonde hair and twin tails and a golden ratio Sundera personality. And when she's in Dara mode, she's super cuddly and sexy. He'd say something gross like that, no doubt. I remember. As I lay dying in the time machine, Sisua gripped my hand and said, Once we arrive, I'll probably disappear. I won't be able to thank you for bringing me to Stein's Gate. So I'll thank you now. Thank you, Uncle. Don't die. Live. Just as she predicted, Sisua vanished the moment we returned to August 21st. Right before my very eyes, the time machine was enveloped in rainbow light and disappeared. She was smiling as she faded away. That was proof I had reached Stein's Gate. And that's why I don't mourn Sisua. And in seven years, let's meet again, okay? I don't know what the future will bring. There's still a possibility that Dari won't get married, that Susua won't be born. But still, I believe that in seven years, we will meet again. And that's when I'll give her this pin, her birthright, as Lab Mem 008. Until then, I'll keep it in a safe place. I aimlessly head out to town, alone. I want to get a better look at the Steinsgate world line. But try as I may, I can't find anything drastically different. Way back, when Ferris's D-mail erased the Moshas from Akiba, that time it was obvious that the world has changed. I feel unsatisfied, so I look up to Radio Kaikon. Obviously, there's no satellite stuck in the roof. It's open for business as usual. When I arrived on this world line, right after I saw Sasua disappear, the very first thing I did was ask Mayuri and Dario a question. Had there been any murders at Radio Kaikon? As they panicked at the sight of my blood-stained body, they answered that no one had been murdered at Radio Kaikon. As we waited for the ambulance to arrive, I had Dario call up the news on my phone. They were running the story about Nakabashi's flight to Russia. This time, Nakabashi looked terribly agitated. His eyes were bloodshot. He was yelling, spraying spit everywhere. His appearance was strikingly similar to how I last saw him in the hallway of Radio Kaikon. To me, his unintelligible rambling was evidence of Operation Skull's success. This is an outrage! An outrage! A fire! How can that happen? My precious pieces were burned to a crisp! The future of humanity went up in flames! This is no time for an interview! I won't stand for this, Russian Airlines! I'll murder every last one of your crew members! Money's not the issue! Aren't you listening? You burn my theaters! My debtors, which would have changed human history forever. I should never let your fools handle my suitcase. None of this would have happened if I just carried it with me. The subtitles read, what was your thesis about? Time travel, the invention that can grant control over all space-time, from past to present to future. The screen immediately returned to the studio, where a female reporter continued. This outburst continued for some time. Dr. Nakabashi, also known as Makisa Shuichi, was detained by Russian authorities upon arrival at Domodedovo International Airport in Moscow. Makisa is currently under investigation by the Tokyo Metropolitan, Metropolitan Police Department as a suspect in a July 28th stabbing of a young man. I don't think anyone's going to listen to Nakabashi now. For argument's sake, let's say Nakabashi manages to recreate Kurisu's thesis from my memory. Nothing will come of it as long as Kurisu is alive. The scientific community undoubtedly thrusts that trusts the Makisa daughter over the father, meaning Karisa can deter any attempts made by Nakabashi. World War III won't break out, or at the very least, it won't be over the Nakabashi paper. I haven't seen Karisu. Apparently, Karisu reported to the police that I was stabbed, but at present there has been no progress on the investigation, as the victim, from their point of view, up and disappeared. I heard from Daru that no one was murdered at Radio Kaikon, and I couldn't find a single report of anyone dying in the area that day. Kurisu is still alive. That much is certain. But I haven't had any contact with her since then. Aside from the few words we exchanged at Radio Kaikon, the current Kurisu and I are strangers. 
Besides, I was bedridden, so it's not like I could have gone to see her even if I'd wanted to. Carissa said that she was supposed to go back to America in August. That was on the Alpha World line, so things may have changed. But what reason would she have to stay in Japan after what her father did to her? I thrust my hand into my pocket. Two pins remain. One of them is for Lab Mem 001. That's me. The remaining badge, which belongs to Lab Mem 004, may never reach its rightful owner. But Carissa is alive. And that's good enough for me. I once chose to let her die. I once killed her with my own two hands. But this time, I was able to save her. No one remembers those three weeks we spent with Kurisu. No one but me. I will remember. I will never forget. So I don't need anything else. I don't want anything else. Hey, Kurisu. I don't know what the future holds. War may still break out. CERN may still complete their time machine. But at the very least, the future is undecided. We're building it now. From the bottom up. Not just me, not just you, but every man, woman, and child. So keep on watching, wherever in this wide world you may be. I take up my own pin and fasten it to my chest. I walk through the sea of shoppers, staring straight ahead. Huh? I quickly turn around. Just now. In the corner of my eye. I saw her. The girl shouldn't be here. Her long hair fluttered as she passed me by. There. A familiar figure. I'd recognize that back anywhere. She stopped too. In the middle of the sidewalk. Slowly. Slowly. She turns to face me. It's her. I thought she'd gone back to America. It's her. She doesn't even know me. It's you! That voice. That face. That hair. Those eyes. Makisa Kurisu is standing there. Same as I remember her. I've been looking everywhere for you. Ever since you saved my life. I was afraid I'd never have a chance to say thank you. I'm so glad we could finally meet. Thank you. Thank you so much. And thank goodness you're all right. Carissa looks so radiant that she tries to hold back her tears. Just when I thought I had finally suppressed it, all my love for her flows out at once. I'm so happy that I want to cry too. So to hide my embarrassment, I take out my phone and put it to my ear. It's me! Why is she here? Reading Steiner didn't activate! Uh, what? Protector? That's a tall order, my friends. But if that's the choice of Stein's Gate, then so be it. Else I congruel. I close my phone and clear my throat. I have no idea what to say. She's still staring at me with those wide, pleading eyes. I open my mouth. We meet again, Christina. How many times do I have to tell you? I'm not Christina, or your assistant, or... Huh? Huh? Now I really have no idea what to say. How does this Kurisu know about that? Those were the names I used to tease Kurisu. She always got mad whenever I used them. They were our bond, our private joke. But I had yet to use them on the day we first met at Radio Kaikon. So how could this world line's Kurisu know? Huh? I... Why did I say that? Words just... popped into my head. It looks like Kurisu is as confused as I am. She stares at me, bewildered. And then... I finally realized the truth. Everyone has reading Steiner. Even if the world line changes, even if the past and the future are rewritten, your memories remain. 
you've merely forgotten. All it takes is a push, and you can remember. The memories of those last three weeks. The memories we made together. <laughs> Welcome back, my assistant, Makisa Kurbisu. No, Christina. I reach into my pocket and take out the last pin. Nobody knows what the future holds. And that is why, just as this reunion demonstrates, the possibilities are endless. I place the pin in Carissa's hand. I gently close her hand in mine. And, holding back my tears, I tell her, This is the choice of Stein's gate. Holy shit! They tied it up! They did it! I was so scared they wouldn't do that! They tied it up! Everything! Oh! That ending just made me like this even more! Like, Mueka's okay. Tanushi and Ne is okay. Everybody at the lab is okay. Susua will probably be born in seven years. Lukaku is fine. Ferris is fine. And... We have a shot at getting a future with Kurisu again. It's crazy! Guys and girls, that was the true ending. To Stein's Gate. Open the Stein's Gate. That was the Okabe ending. We have done 98% of this game. We're missing a few, like, phone-related achievements. Are we missing any CG? Oh, man. That's amazing. It's so amazing. Please tell me we're not missing. We are missing one picture, actually. We're missing one picture and a few achievements. And you know what? It wouldn't be right to call this the final episode if we didn't get everything and did this 100%. So, I'm gonna get to work. Let's see if we can uncover the mysteries. Okay guys and girls, so I've been at this for like maybe an hour or two now. I went back and I replied differently to some mails here and there. And thus I was able to get every single achievement. Most of them are pretty straightforward. Clear this and this, get this and this ending. We got 100% CG achievements. Now a lot of these were just about replying like a specific thing to mails. And get like all the pictures of the frog, the songs of chaos. That sort of stuff. So that was amusing and achievements complete and we got the bonus image which I assume is the last one in the CG library now we should have unlocked every single image in Stein's Gate just like we did with Katawa Shoujo yep that's what I like to see now the clear list here 189 out of 189 tips, 100% album completion, we got 42 out of 42 achievements, all the ending, we have done this game 100%, it took us a little over 50 hours, but it has been done, at long last, so thank you so much for watching, guys and girls, I hope you're excited for the next game that we do, the next novel, whatever it may be. So, stay tuned for a future video where I will ask for your suggestions for new visual novels. No point leaving in the comments here, rather wait until I take the suggestions so I can have them all in one place and we can decide what journey to go on next. Still good day, take care and stay awesome. But most important everybody... Stay dark. Goodbye. The voices of those gathered around me are gradually replaced by a loud ringing in my ears. By now, I'm unable to move my head. My eyes turn upwards to see the mute moving of their lips. Even as I clutch my chest, I realize I can't feel my fingers anymore, nor my feet. It feels like my entire body is shutting down, starting from my extremity. No, 
You're not fucking dying on me, okay? You're not fucking dying on me.